Okay, when you are ready to start assembling your caster drawing here, uh, so that you can then go ahead and create an exploded view drawing, complete with parts list and balloons, one of the first things that you need to do is you need to actually assemble it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So to start an assembly file, and you select File, you're going to go ahead and select New, and once you do that, you want to make sure that you have selected uh, the correct uh, uh, unit. As this is a metric part, I'm going to go ahead and select metric, and then I'm going to come down here and I want to select the proper assembly file. Notice there's a lot of them here. I want the standard MM for millimeters, IAM. So I select it and then I hit create. Now with the assembly file open, I can now come up to the top of the screen here and I can click on place and I can go find the actual drawings or the actual models that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the TechEd server where I have all my stuff saved. And we'll go ahead and see where can we find this particular drawing. So there's my caster assembly. I'm going to jump into here. And these are my parts. So I'm going to definitely need an axle support. I'm going to, get to need an axle. I'm also going to need a bushing, probably the top plate, and a wheel. So what I'll do is I know I need to have two axles. So we'll go ahead and I'll drop one axle in here. And I'll go ahead and drop a second one because I know I'm going to need it. Then I'll go back into place and we'll go grab the rest of these. I know I need one axle. I'm going to need one top plate and I'm also going to need one wheel. So if I hold down my control key and then select these objects, I know that I can bring all those in together, drop those, I only need one set of those. Then I can come back out and I know that I need to have a bushing and I'm going to need two bushings. So we'll go ahead and drop two bushings in position, hit escape, and then I am ready to start putting these objects together. Now, when you create an exploded view drawing, you always want to work on the isometric view. So one of the first things I always do is assure I'm on an isometric view by hitting the corner of the cube. Then I also like to go in and I like to look at some of the planes that I have set up here to make sure that I'm working on these axes planes. Okay, so I'm in parallel uh, and perpendicular to the planes. So I'm all set there. Now what I can do is I can start assembling. So if I take and I look at this object, I want this particular uh, object to fit into this hole. So I'm going to take this bushing and stick it inside of this hole. Now I'm going to just go back to my drawing here and ensure that that's what it looks like. Yep, so it looks like this bushing does slide into that particular feature on the caster. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually zoom in on this so we can see it. Yep, this bushing slides into the caster that way. So we'll go back out to here and I'm going to come up here to my constraint tools. I'll grab my constraint tool. And the tool that I want to focus on here for this particular insert uh, is called the insert constraint. So we'll go ahead and select that. And now I'm going to go ahead and select, I want to have this surface, so center axis highlights, and then this surface edge right here, this rounded surface edge right there, is going to make contact with this rounded surface edge. Okay, so we'll go ahead and select those. Now, that is in position now, in locked in position. That's what I want to have happen, so I'll go ahead and hit apply. So now that has been locked in the position and is set. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to set up this object moving from this plate forward. All right, so this plate's going to be important uh, in positioning. So let's go ahead and start dealing with this next, okay? So I'm going to jump back here to the drawing and take a look. And it looks like that this caster fits into this notch here, this little recess on the plate, which is great. So we'll go ahead and we'll set this up in the position. So the other thing I also want to do is I don't want this caster to move around anymore. So I want to take the caster, left click on it, right click, and then I want to hit the button for grounded. This part is now grounded. This part will not move. Okay. So with that set in position, we're going to go ahead and start pulling this together. So these holes are what are actually going to go ahead and align. So we'll go ahead and use the constraint tool. And I can use the insert constraint. I'm going to say that the top surface of that hole is now going to be set to the hole at that point. Now, by doing so, I can hit apply. And then what will happen is it should rotate. Yep, rotates around just like so. So the next thing I can do is I could go ahead and set up the constraint so that I can say, OK, center axis of caster mounting point to center axis of hole. They can line up. So we'll go ahead and grab uh, constraint. I'll grab just a simple make constraint. And we'll go ahead and say that we're going to run center axis right here to center axis here and hit apply. So what that has now done, it has in essence linked those objects together, utilizing the center axis of the holes. 
So what I can now do is I can do it to the same thing over here on this side. Constrain tool, we'll go ahead and use the insert constraint again. We'll flip this thing around, say insert, and this time I want it to go over here. Jumps into position, hit apply. We're going to hit cancel, and I want it to spin this thing around a little bit, get it closer. Constraint tool, make constraint, center axis to center axis, and apply. So now we are in good position. Now we go ahead and set this other bushing. So we'll grab constraint, we'll grab the insert, and again, it's this shoulder edge right here that's going to meet up with the edge of that piece right there, and hit apply. And now we keep going forward. We're going to go ahead and use this axle. And I'm just going to say right away, this axle is going to then set itself up to insert to the object as such. Now, as I go ahead and I look at the axle and the relationship here, looks like this axle should probably really get centered. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say, let's do this as an offset. We do a one millimeter offset here. And that looks really, really nice as far as this being centered in position. So we'll hit apply that way. So we have an all set in position. Now, one of the last things that we need to do here is we need to go ahead and set up the wheel onto the caster here. All right, so what we'll do is grab constraint. We'll go ahead and grab the insert constraint. We'll do the exact same thing again. We'll go ahead and grab that edge. We're going to come down here. And we'll go ahead and select that edge. Now, I really want it to go in the other direction, so I'll change this solution here so that it is now running in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to take a look at this and see how centered up we are. It looks like we need a little offset here also. Yep, looks like one millimeter offset pushes us over, so we center up and apply, hit cancel, and now we have our assembled axle. Now, the only issue is that you can't see this thing really spinning because we have no feature on it that's really visible. So I'm going to double click on it, which then opens the actual feature. And I just want to go ahead and plug a little hole in this thing so that it's a little easier for me to see what's going on here on this part. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop a hole in here and hit OK. Don't really care how big the hole is because all I really want to do is see it turn. So what I can do is if I move this wheel now, you can see that hole coming around there. I'm actually rotating this object on that shaft because you can see this little hole over here moving back and forth. Now, it's not a huge hole. We can actually then, uh, if I wanted to go back in and make it larger, we could, but you can see that it is now rotating. So that's all set. It's all ready to go. We can now set up the exploded view portion. So to do the exploded view portion, one of the first things you have to do before you do that is you have to save as <laughs> So as you're saving, make sure you save this object back into the location where you have your parts. So I'm going to take this right back into the same location where I have my parts set up. And we'll go in here into the caster assembly drawing. We're going to go into uh, final. And I'm going to go ahead and save this thing in here as caster assembly uh, so that everything is still in the same location uh, with the other files. Okay, so it's all going to end up there together and it can find... Uh, where those parts and pieces are located. All right, so with that all set up now, let's explode it. So we'll go to File, we're going to come to New, and we're going to come all the way down here to the bottom to Standard I A IPN. This is a millimeter file, and hit Create. So with that opening up, we'll then go back in, and we're going to go find that caster drawing, uh, which is going to be in that location I just saved it to. So we've got to go in and find that. So we're going to go into Staff, Me, and let's see here, caster drawing, final, and there is my caster assembly, hit open. And we need to explode this and move these parts away from each other on the isometric axis. So by setting this up on the isometric axis, I can now grab the button up here for tweak components. So when I select tweak components, I want to think about what comes apart. So what's really going to come off of this thing first is this bottom base. So I select it. Now, if we had nuts and bolts on this, we'd have to pull those apart first, all right? But we don't have them on here now. So what we'll do is grab the bottom base. I'm then going to left click and hold on the arrow and drag that down away from the parts so they do not overlap. When I have that set up, I hit the green check. I can now go ahead and start pulling the caster sides away. So we'll select tweak components, select the caster, and then select and pull and move that away from the other objects. Now, I'm going to pull this away just far enough so that this caster uh, bushing 
can have some room to move over also. So I'll hit the green check, and then this time I want to take and move just this caster bushing over. All right, so it has space here. I'll hit the green check, and now I'm going to take and push everything else out the back side here. So I'll go ahead and grab this caster, and we're going to go ahead and move this out so it doesn't overlap anything, and give a little bit of space here for the bushing. Hit the green check, and then this time I need to find that bushing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this drawing, tweak components, grab the bushing. Then I want to take and go back to that same isometric view where I was set up before. So you might have to twist and turn this thing around a little bit. And then you can click and hold and drag the, the caster uh, bushing out. It's important you do it on the same isometric axis because you need that view on the axis. Okay. Now, as I look at this, I need to be able to pull this axle out also, so I need a little bit of extra space. So I'll grab Tweak Components, and this time I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select those three objects. While they're spaced out, I can then grab that mouse, or the uh, arrow, and pull all of them away from the object, and hit the green check. This, in essence, explodes the caster away from the parts. Now, the only other thing I want to do is I want to tidy up some of these tweak lines. What I want to do is get rid of this tweak line here because that is sort of a redundant tweak and that this center line really does align as necessary. So you select it left, right click, hide trail segment, current. I'm going to do this again here. I'm going to select this. I'm also going to then go ahead, select this, right click, and then hide trail current. And I want to get rid of some of these trail segments. So what I should be able to do is continue um, tweaking through here and getting rid of those particular segments. Okay, with this cleaned up and trails lined up, center hold to center hold, this is in good position, we can go ahead and now hit new snapshot view. What this does is it creates the snapshot that we will use on our drawing sheet. So with that set up, we can go ahead and save the file. We'll do save as again. Make sure you stick it into the exact same location where everything is located. All right, all your parts and pieces are on the same file. Don't try mixing things up. And then what we can do is if I go into a new sheet here, I can go ahead and first set it up. So uh, this is not going to work on a B size sheet. So I need to edit this sheet. So let's go ahead and hit the plus symbol and right click on this. And we should be able to get edit sheet. There it is. And let's go ahead and make this say like a C size sheet. We're going to need a bigger sheet. Then we'll go ahead and hit base, and then we can start to see the caster popping up here. And we should be able to take this thing to, oh, I don't know, can we get it one-to-one? -one? Yeah, we can fit it one-to-one. -one. So we'll go ahead and set this up on sheet and hit the OK button. With that set into position, I can then go ahead and grab the annotation tab and immediately grab my parts list. And there's my parts list for the object, and then I can start ballooning my parts and move through this particular object so that all the balloons come off at a nice clean angle. Whoops, that angle didn't work. Let's do this again. We'll then come up on a clean angle over, lock, and continue. So with setting all this up, you can see how quick and fast and easy this really can be uh, to create an exploded view drawing. Hopefully this helps get you through the caster assembly assignment.